Here's the plain mirror. It is perpendicular to the paper like this. To show that the smooth, shiny side of the mirror is on the left side, I usually draw these little lines on the back side of the mirror. This line here is perpendicular to the mirror and it can be called the principal axis. This is the object in front of the mirror. We usually draw an arrow to represent the object. So this arrow may represent a vase of flowers or whatever. Now let's find the image of this object produced by the mirror. Usually we start by finding the image of the tip of the arrow. The tip of the arrow sends light rays out in all directions. But all we need are two rays. So we can just choose certain special, easier rays to follow. For example, I can draw a ray that is parallel to the principal axis. This ray should hit the mirror and reflect straight back. I can draw another ray that goes to the point where the principal axis meets the mirror. This ray would reflect symmetrically about the principal axis because the law of reflection tells us that the angle of incidence equals to the angle of reflection. An image is formed at where the rays meet. However, in this case, the two reflected rays will never meet. But for an observer in front of the mirror, this ray can seem to come from anywhere along this straight line. And this ray can seem to come from anywhere along this straight line. Because our normal experience tells us that light travel in straight lines. Therefore, to the observer in front of the mirror, the two rays seem to be from this point where the two ray extensions meet. So this is where the image of the tip of the arrow is formed. And the observer would see that the image is right here. And this is the image of the object formed by this plane mirror. Because this image is formed by light ray extensions, not real light rays, this is called a virtual image. This image is formed behind the mirror because a mirror reflects light. No light rays from the object can reach behind the mirror. And as you can see, this virtual image is upright and the same size as the object. Now let's look at what we drew here. These two angles are the same because the angle of incidence equals to the angle of reflection. And these two are opposite angles, so they are also the same. Therefore, these two angles are the same. If we look at these two right triangles, we can see that they are congruent. This means uh, these two distances uh, are the same. The distance between the object and the mirror is called object distance DO. The distance between the image and the mirror is called image distance DI. As you can see, the image formed by a plane mirror is equal distance behind the mirror. Now think about your experience when you look into a plane mirror. Compare the images to the objects. Do the images look upright, same size as the object, and equal distance behind the mirror? Now let's look at how an observer actually sees the image. Suppose the observer's eye is right over here. He or she will not receive these two reflected rays. But the observer can receive other reflected rays. The observer can receive a ray that looks like it is from the tip of the image. Of course, this light ray does not really come from the image. It comes from this ray being reflected by the mirror. Because the pupil has size, there are multiple rays received by one pupil, such as this ray, which is really this ray being reflected by the mirror. The observer perceives the light rays coming from here, so this is where the observer sees the image. We can see depth because our pupils have size, so we can receive multiple rays from one point. If a pupil is only one dot, from that one eye, an observer can only receive one light ray. If this is the single ray that one dot pupil can receive, then the observer can only tell that the image is somewhere along this line. The observer would not be able to tell how far away the image is. 
but because our pupil has size, so we can see depth even with one eye. With two eyes, we would be able to receive light rays from wider angles. Therefore, we can see depth better with two eyes. Now try to look around with one eye covered and then with both eyes open. Do you find that you see more depth with both eyes open? With only one eye, the things around you appear to be less 3D. With both eyes open, the world looks more 3D and we can tell how far away things are more easily.